morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Mount Vale this morning. Amen. On a good, snowy, rainy, sleet, sunshiny day. <laughs> Amen. If you don't like the weather here, just hang around. It'll change in a minute to suit you. Praise the Lord. But it is good to see everybody out tonight. Tonight. Good gravy. This morning, real quick while I said that, do not forget we will not be having evening service tonight. So uh, due to this, some more of the weather supposed to be rolling in, they say. Uh, so whether they're right or not, we'll find out. Amen. How many's lived here for a long time? How many know the weather's been this way all your life? Amen. It's so, the so way it's always been, and it'll probably be that way till the end, I guess. But Hey, Mount Bell, let's do this. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome this morning. We're so glad you're with us. So glad you're watching Facebook live stream, and I'm sure we got a few that are that stayed home, and, and and I don't blame some of them if they live in some rough places. It was worse, worser. Is worse or a word? Worser is not a word. It is. No, I can make it one right. It was worse, more worse in Morristown than it was out here, and I live about seven miles from here, and it, we had more slush and ice on our stuff than than we did out here. So I'm sure that some people were not able to come, and don't blame them. Uh, got to be careful. Amen. Especially when you get my age or older, you don't want to slip on the ice. <laughs> Some of you old people shaking your head, yeah. <laughs> so you want to be safe. But anyway, it is good to see everybody out today. We'd like to welcome you again to Mount Vale if you're a visitor. We're glad you're with us. Hopefully our, our connection team has given you a connection card. We'd love for you to fill that out this morning. You can QR it, you can text it, or you can do it manually. And there's a drop box out by the welcome desk out there. We'd love to stay connected with you and all that. But if you can... Let's stand for the reading of God's word, and I forgot to get somebody to read. Well, Buffy, you got something to read? You got scripture to quote? Golly, Brady, you got something to read? You got scripture you can quote? All right, well, we're going to have to wing it because I forgot. It throwed me off schedule this morning, amen? Hey, the easiest scripture to quote is Jesus wept. Everybody knows that, but <laughs> that's the shortest verse, if you will. But uh, I'm trying to think of one myself, and I should have had one. Let's do John 3.16. How many know it? Nobody knows that? How many knows John 3.16? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I hope so, because it's at every football game you can see it posted up there. Amen. Uh, hey, let's do this. I know it's a little out of the ordinary, and we're, we're kind of out of the ordinary this morning. The snow's messed us all up. But can we quote it together? Yeah, amen. So just just follow after me, if you will. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Can somebody give the Lord a good praise for that? Amen. Hey, if you're a partaker of that, you ought to give him a real good praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you can't remember nothing, you can always go back to that one. Amen. So, but just a few quick announcements. Like I said earlier, we will not be having evening service tonight. Uh, so uh, pass that around, spread that around due to the weather that's supposed to be moving in and, and things like that. We should be back on schedule Wednesday night. So uh, also, Coffee and a Word, will be running it Monday night at 6.30 via Facebook Live. Uh, so if you'd like to watch that, please tune in and watch that. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Don't forget, we're still in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. I know the announcement video will hit this for you, but don't forget, Friday the 21st, we are having our uh, healing and deliverance service at that, that night at 7 o'clock. So remember that. And I think that's all we got. Y'all got anything? It's Brother Roger. Men's Ministries meeting when? Thursday? Yeah, okay. So we're not meeting. Okay. If you signed up for the men's conference and you want the early discount, the money needs to be in by the end of this month. See Brother Roger about that. That's down in Cleveland. Am I right? Cleveland. Uh, there's, they got a bunch of guest speakers going to be there. I think Jim Rayleigh's going to be there. Yeah. Tuttle's Church, Jamie Tuttle. And what's her name? You women folk know her. Uh, who? Jamie Tuttle's. Yeah. What's her name? 
She's more famous than he is. Judy Jacobs, that's her husband. So if y'all knew Judy Jacobs, I hate to say that, but she is more known than he is. He, she's been doing it a little longer, I think. But anyway, so let's remember those things. So let's, let's pray. Let's invite the Lord into the house this morning. Let's worship the Lord with everything we have. Amen. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. We thank you for all that you do here at Mount Vale, Father. Lord, we're asking you, God, to anoint our singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastors. He brings forth the word, Father, Lord. God, anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work today, God. God, we're asking you to do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in this place today, Father, Lord. God, we come together, God, believing and knowing nothing's too hard, nothing's too impossible for you, Father God. Touch those that are sick today, God. Touch those that are at home today, God. Keep them safe in this time, Lord. And Lord God, we ask you to pour out your blessings. We plead the blood of Jesus over this house and over your people today, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you, God, to most importantly, let your will and your way be done in this house. And everybody said, Amen. Somebody give the Lord a good praise this morning. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated just for a moment. I want to uh, bring something to your attention. We're, we're going to take it today. and I know there's not a lot of people here as normal, but hopefully they're watching Facebook. We're starting something new at Mount Vale, and we've been working on it and been announcing it a little bit, but it's called our Small Life Groups, and we're, we're kind of kicking that off a little bit, and they're supposed to be putting some slides up for me. What this really is is an extension of discipleship, amen? It's, to, it's for people can come together under their interest, if you will. There's Bible studies. We've got a handful that's already in operation and, and some that are coming on board that are new. Um, we've got heroes right here as far as veterans. If you're a veteran, we're going to start meeting possibly at least the first week, maybe once a week, uh, just kind of get together. We're going to read some scriptures. We're going to do a Bible study. We're going to fellowship. Basically, what small life groups is is a place to connect, a place for discipleship, and a place to encourage and the place to help you move, all of us to move to our next level in the walk with the Lord. And you can see some of these popping up. We've already got Coffee in the Word. That's a virtual. Some of them are virtual. Uh, that's on Facebook. We also have uh, the Prayer Wheel Intercessors. If you really feel like you're an intercessor, a prayer warrior, if you will, Brother Larry Kay and Sister Debbie starting that. You can go on our church center apps just real quickly, and you can look these up under the groups, small life groups, and uh, you can go and look and see their times and their meeting places. Sister Buffy and Bailey's doing one for called Single Focus for ages 18 to 25. Uh, so that left me. How'd you get in there? I'm just asking. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just picking at her. Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. <laughs> But it's for 18 and 25. If you are a single person, that's for you. If you let me say this, I'm pointing out these leaders. If you got any questions, you can go talk to them. You can sign up with them. You can sign up. Uh, Sister Deborah and Sister Missy's doing one called Overcomers. It's going to be on Zoom. It's going to be virtual, so you'll be zooming in, and you can talk to her or talk to Misty about that. And uh, let's see if I'm missing anybody. Also, we got Brother Alan Redmond does one every Wednesday morning at nine o'clock. Breakfast with Jesus at Charlotte's restaurants. They meet together, they fellowship, they eat. And uh, man, it's hard to go there on the fast, ain't it, brother? <laughs> but it, and they eat and they fellowship and they have Bible study and things like that. So um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anybody. That's all you got. Good deal. That's how many we have right now. And if you'd like to be part of this, they're going to start the first week in February. And it, they'll run a semester. Your leaders will talk to you about that. And then we'll have some more, uh, hopefully. Let, let me say this. If you're sitting here or watching and you'd like to be a leader of a small life group, please come see me. And you can do it under your interest. Let's say you like to fish a lot, Charlie. You can pull some guys together every week, go fishing, have Bible study, and, and things of that nature. As long as you, hey, how many know that Charlie got first place in the Cherokee Lake Bass Tournament Saturday? Amen. Amen. That's a big deal. I mean, y'all seen some of the fish. I'm jealous because he didn't take me with him. <laughs> so, but it's hard to fit two people on that kayak. Ain't it? There you go. But anyway, so whatever interest you got, if you would, please come see me. We'd love to start this. This is more of an extension of our discipleship, trying to get everybody in the word. We also uh, are just looking for leaders and come talk to me about that. And, and so it's just based on your interest sometimes of what you like. If you like to sew and you like to pull a bunch of women folk together and sew and teach the word of God and talk about the word of God. I said women folk. Men could come too, I guess. I don't, I'm not a sower, so I don't know, but I said women. But anyway, whatever your group involves. But if you'd like to be part of it or like to start a, a small group, please come see me. Amen. Uh, I want to ask real quick, if you got any questions about this, please come see me. Come see some of these leaders. Go on our church center app. It'll tell you. Go to the group section, right? The small life groups, and you can click on there and look at those. Okay? Now, with all that being said, if you'll stand and the ushers get ready, we're going to take up our offering. How many's come to, we always say this, and I almost caught myself. We always say how many's come to worship the Lord, but how many's come to give to the Lord? Come on now. That, that's, that's, it's worship in itself. I've been reading, I had a little message for the 815, and it didn't get to preach it because of the snow, and the Lord gives me opportunity, I'll do it. But we use this scripture a lot, but think about this. It says the Bible loves a cheerful giver. But if you read in the first part of that passage, it says those that you don't give out of necessity and you don't give out of being begrudgingly, if you will, but you give out of love and it's a cheerful thing to give. Amen. I, I was reading and I'm going to share it because I think it's important. I was reading that in the Jewish temple, they had two chests, if you will, the ones for necessity, the ones you were required to give, which is your 10%. Amen. Amen. They had the heave offering and the wave offerings and all that. But then there was a chest for free will offerings. 
Come on. That's the cheerful heart. That's the cheerful. You, ha you give out of because God asked us to give or commands us to give our tithes. But when we give above and beyond our tithes, then we become a cheerful. Woo. That hit hard, didn't it? Cheerful giver. Amen. So stand with me if you can, if you ain't, if you will. We're going to pray. Think about it. Read your word. Think about it. It's not what I'm saying. It's what the word says. Amen. How many come to give cheerfully unto the Lord this morning? Amen. Come on. It's all right. We almost sit back like, well, we're not supposed to tell everybody. But I think you ought to do this. If you come to give cheerfully unto the Lord, why don't you give the Lord a good praise for what he's blessed you for this morning? Amen. It ought to be a cheerful time. Come on. We ought to be smiles on our faces when we come. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we thank you for the men and women who so faithfully give to this house, Father God, and to your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we're asking you, God, right now to take these tithes, take these offerings, Father God. Bless them for the use of your kingdom, Father God. Multiply it, Father Lord. And Lord, we're asking you right now to bless the gift and the givers. They bring their tithes and bring their offerings into your storehouse, Father Lord. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Welcome to Mount Bell Church, where our goal is for souls. I am Lisa. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you are looking as forward to what God has in store for you in 2022 as much as I am. Year 2021 was a challenging year for my family, and I know I am speaking for a lot of others as well, but I can gladly say great was God's faithfulness toward us. Now let me say we are so honored that you have joined us in this service. If you are a first-time guest or visitor, we are so glad that you are here. So glad that we have an exclusive welcome gift out in the foyer at the Connections Desk just for you. If you have any questions about our church, find a First Impression team member by looking for those wearing the green lanyards around their necks. Now check out these upcoming January happenings. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. On January the 1st, we kicked off our 21 days of prayer and fasting. This year, our youth will be hosting each prayer night with our very own Brady Williams leading in prayer and worship. Prayer will start at 6.30 every weeknight, but at 5.30 on Wednesday nights. Let's bring our first fruits to God during these days. As the 21-day corporate prayer and fasting comes to an end, we will be having a healing and deliverance service on Friday, January the 21st at 7 p.m. Invite as many as you can for this special service. The Handcrafted by God's Women's Ministry is inviting all ladies for their monthly meeting this upcoming Thursday, January the 20th at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall for fun, fellowship, devotion, and food. Bring a friend and a finger food. There will also be chili and all the fixings already there. And if you were a lady from the last meeting that drew a woman's name from the Bible to study, please bring those answers to share as well. The annual leadership volunteer conference that was originally planned for Saturday, January the 8th, was postponed to this upcoming Saturday, January the 22nd at 9 a.m. in the main sanctuary. Come early for breakfast. If you are a minister, leader, volunteer, or if you do anything at all in the church, you are requested to be at this meeting. Please let Pastor know if you cannot attend January the 22nd. Love is in the air. This year's annual Valentine's Day banquet will be held on February the 12th at 5 p.m. The cost is $30 per couple. Please register on the Church Center app. Also, you can start making payments now on the kiosk for this event. The menu this year includes baked spaghetti, tossed salad, baked potato, roll, and a dessert. Pastor Bobby Wallingsworth is preaching our 6 p.m. service on January the 30th. Come expecting a mighty move of God. Here at Mount Bell Church, we believe each one can reach one. We are saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. And once again, Happy New Year's. Join us now as we continue with praise and worship. Come on, let's all stand and get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Till what? Till I 
and you didn't want to go through the motions today. Okay, well, just a few of you. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm glad that y'all came this morning. Despite the cold, the snow, the ice. Actually, Jeff said he didn't get as much as Morristown, but I'm glad to see y'all come this morning anyways. But we're going to worship the Lord, Amen. A unified body, we're going to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. How I many you know the name of Jesus is lifted high? Hallelujah. We're going to lift up that name this morning. Amen.
of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise in the house today. Come on, somebody, let's give the Lord the best clap, hand, uh, hand clap offering we give all day. We don't get to come back tonight, amen, so let's give him a good one, amen. You love the Lord this morning? I need a little monitor, guys, I'm plumb out, amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Hey, let's make our guests and visitors, give them a real warm welcome this morning. Good to see you. Thank God you're here with us today, amen. Reach down, pick up your Bible, turn with me to the book of Job, amen, as soon as I find out where we're going, amen. Job chapter 14, amen, got a real popular little scripture right here, got a thought I want to preach on today, uh, being honest with you, I reached way back, you know, studying some other things, and the Lord took me back here, and it's an old, it's an old, old message from the archives, but it must be pertinent for right now. For the Lord did lay it on my heart. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting with us, we hope you enjoy your visit. I hope you come back and just become one of us. Uh, don't forget, this Friday night, we're having our healing and deliverance service at the end of all of our prayer and fasting. I think we're coming back into prayer tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night, this young man, see that young man right there? He's going to be leading us the rest of this week. Amen. Uh, it's going to be uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we got church on Friday night, bring those people that are sick, amen, that need a healing, need a touch from God, bring the lost, amen, we're believing for a great move of God. Don't forget also, uh, don't, I mean, you can't call me and text me if you want to, but I'm going to say, I already said, all means all, amen. If you do anything in the church whatsoever, be at the meeting this Saturday. We're having breakfast in the fellowship hall, and we're going to meet in here Amen, and just, just kind of refresh everybody on some few things as we get started into this new year. Amen. I, as your pastor, I appreciate all your prayers. Last week, I was terribly, terribly sick. Amen, and I appreciate all the prayers that went up for me, and I just could not cancel this morning after not being here last week. Job chapter 14, verse 14. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you come tonight, you got to preach and give double in the offering. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Good to see you. Job asked us a question this morning. He said, if a man die, I think we know the, not, I think we can answer this right here and say when a man dies. I mean, understand it's appointed unto man once to die. We all have this appointment and we act like that it's never going to happen to us. And in America, we do this. I mean, we, in America, when, when someone passes away, amen, we, we send them to the funeral home. The funeral home makes them up, makes them look like they're asleep, amen. But it's not if, it's when a man dies. Job's asked the question. He said, shall he live again? 
All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my chains come. Let's pray. Father, so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful, Lord, for the worship. For the worshipers has, a, has arose this morning and lifted up holy hands without wrath and doubting. We've come together in this place, God, and we've determined in our hearts, God, that we're going to give you glory, do your name. Despite the circumstances, Lord, we'll never give you circumstantial praise, but God, we'll praise you in the midst of a storm. Lord, our country is in the midst of the worst storm I think it's ever faced since we have been a nation. And God, I just pray today that you'd send a revival from the White House to the outhouse, God, in this place. Pour out of your spirit, God, and show, Lord, this this last generation. Lord, we believe this is the last generation before you come. Show yourself real to these people, God. And Father, I pray, Lord, your your choice blessings upon each and every one's here today. I pray, God, over this word, Lord, let this word come forth with power, with spirit, and with anointing. And God, touch our hearts that we will be changed into your image and likeness. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And the church said... Amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. So good to see each and every one out today. Amen. Amen. Throughout our lives from childhood to adulthood, many important changes do occur. Amen. We change jobs, change schools, change friends. And can I just say this? We do not adapt to change uh, very well, do we? I I know you do, but most everybody else we know don't adapt. And it was kind of told as a joke, but it was probably the truth. Uh, of a, cho- a church that came together and they got a committee together and they was going to vote on somebody and get them in. Somebody that was just going to be in charge of changing the light bulbs. And after much deliberation, amen, they decided they would have no change. Amen. That's the way church works. Amen. We are very much creatures of habit. Amen. We like it the way we like it. Amen. My wife makes fun of me all the time because I lose my keys. All right. But I want to tell you something. She don't never tell the whole story. She'll come to me to three times a day and she said will you call my cell phone amen so she loses her cell phone too amen we we're creatures of habit we like it the way we like it we don't want nothing changed around us amen can i just tell you this so we are as far in god as we're ever going to be until we commit to a change we need to change amen the church cannot sit in one place here's what denomination does denomination does this denomination takes a move of god they build a building around it. they build a wall around it. they will not let you in you cannot change one thing about it if you change it then it's religious and we don't need anything to do we want to do it and we call it the old past I want you to understand I do believe the church needs to seek out the old past but I do believe you're going to have to go back farther than one or two generations to find the old path that the Bible is talking about amen it, it's it is difficult amen to change look at your neighbor and say he's preaching on you this morning it's difficult to change automobiles for before we get used to driving a certain kind of car it's and we're not easily persuaded to change we get into a habit of going to the same places, doing the same things, staying around the same people. Many times we isolate ourselves because of the refusal to change. Amen. Norma goes out to eat, and this is the truth with my hand up, and I get to preach on her today, all right? But we go to a restaurant, it don't matter if we've eaten at that restaurant 25 times. She's only going to order one thing when she gets there. And I can tell you what the thing will be, wherever, whatever it is, wherever we go. And she'll say, I'm just so tired of eating her. I said, honey, you need to get something else. They got a whole menu full of stuff that you can eat, amen? And, and I want to bring, I just want to bring three words to your attention this morning, amen? And I'll get out of your way. These words are transformed. Transformed. Amen. Amen. How many know we got to be transformed? Amen. Transfigured and transferred. They represent a change of life. Amen. A change of likeness and a change of location. I want to start with transformed if I could this morning. He was talking about, Job was talking about our transformation. He said, he said, if a man dies, shall he live again? I'll, he said, all my days I'll wait till my change comes. Romans 3 and 20, 23 he said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have this gospel that is retrofitted for America, amen, that we are somehow or another all right. We're kind of good people anyway. And all we wanted to do was join the Jesus Club so we can seal the deal and get to go to heaven. But I want you to understand with me today, amen, that you and I were wretched and lost and blind, amen, and we were undone without 
about God or his son. Amen. You and I had to be transformed. That's what we're talking about right now for just for a moment. Everyone here today was born in sin. You need to understand with me, amen, that we are no better, amen, than the man that's out in the street, amen, before we come to know Christ. We may have had more stuff, more substance, more money, but you know something? Lost is lost is lost, amen. There is no IRAs in hell, somebody. Say amen with me, amen. The psalmist said in Psalms 51, amen, David said, I was shaping in iniquity, verse 5, and in sin did my mother conceive me, conceive me. The whole premise of the gospel is God sent his son Jesus Christ to be the transforming agents in our life. Modern day Christianity has took away the transformation. Amen, pastor. It's the truth. Uh, modern day Christianity, Christianity has taken away the transformation. That's why people don't want to come to church. They see people out there who live like they live, act like they act, go to the same places they go, and they say, if they are going to heaven, so am I. But I want you to know with me today, amen, that I believe that Christ in you is the hope of glory. I believe that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I believe today that if Jesus Christ is in the house, there will be some evidence that he abides in you. If you believe that, give him a praise. And he is the transforming agent in our lives. Because as we were, none of us could enter the kingdom of heaven. I truly believe the missing agent in church today is spiritual transformation in people's lives. I see people who call themselves Christian, who say they are Christian. I, I was watching, let me, let me jump right here. I, I was watching this little thing, and these guys were building motorcycles. If you know anything about me, I, I like to wrench on everything. I don't care what it is. I like to work on motorcycles, cars, trucks. I like beating, banging on stuff. And, and I was watching this motorcycle build, and these guys build them up some motorcycles. And then they went, and, and, they, and, they, and they got some patches, and they got to looking around. And, and they were taking pictures off the Internet and getting patches made like what they saw. And they run into some guys that knew what the patches was about. And they didn't speak the language, that the, and they, they were filling up their bikes. And just for a moment, it was about to get bad because the guys that really had the patches, that really knew what it was about, that was really a member of the gang, began to question them. And they advised them to take the patches off because they were not real gang members. Okay? They looked like it. They had motorcycles like they should have had to been in the gang, but they were not a part of it. They were only, amen, they were only bikers, amen, uh, 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 to pretend bikers, if you will. They weren't real gangsters. They weren't real, really in the gang, amen. And, and we have a lot of Christians that look the part, yes and amen. And I think you should. I'm not against that. We have a lot of, uh, we, we have a lot of Christians that are Christian in name only, but they act the part at the right time. At the right time. I, well, I'll behave. I'm going to be nice. Uh, but I had a thought, but I won't even share it with you because it's twin men and the Lord. Amen. But I, I'm, I've literally pulled up people's houses. Man, and I asked Trace to spit cups flying everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And he's praise the Lord, preacher. He's so good to see you today. All I've done is read my Bible all day long. Amen. I've been praying for you. I, I, I was praying this morning. An angel of the Lord appeared to me and told me you was going to be my pastor forever. Amen. Uh, but they look the part. The problem in America today is there's, there's a lack of the transforming agent, which is Christ. We take them in, we baptize them, we let them become members. But in reality, amen, they're only sinners disguised as Christians. I ain't going to get no amens. That's all right. I, I, I take a grunt right now. John 3 and 3, Jesus talking, amen, talking to Nicodemus. He said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want you to understand this is a very simple but pragmatic message this morning. I want you to understand you must be, amen. You have to be. If you're ever going to get to heaven, it's not because you joined the church, Church of God, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic. It don't make any difference to God. God, don't, God didn't even invent the, the denominational system. Man did. But this is one prerequisite to heaven. 
something. You must be. There's not a, well, maybe I am or maybe I ain't. Can I just tell you this? I want you to understand with me. Amen. So many, almost three decades ago, I gave my heart to God. I bowed my knee to the cross of Calvary. I called upon the name of the Lord and he saved me. Can I tell you that I've messed it up along the way? Can I just be honest and just tell you I fell flat on my face, but he was always there. I never had a conscience of sin until I became a Christian. When I really was born of the Spirit, I want you to understand with me, old things passed away and behold, all things came became new. What we are missing, the missing agent in Christianity today is the transforming power of the cross of Calvary. Somebody give him praise. Jesus said, he literally said, we have to be transformed in order to enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born into the family. Hey Amen. Too many people running around claiming Christianity, but they're not really saved. The reason I say that is old things have not passed away in their life. I'd make them mad. They'll cuss you just like a sinner would. Don't that drive you crazy? Maybe it's maybe I've maybe I've been enlightened to something. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But it seemed to me like in the last two years, I have never in my life heard so many cussing preachers. If I start cussing, vote my hide out and get you somebody that's trying to live right. I had a preacher call me the other day. He cussed four times on the phone. Four. And he didn't slip. He was on purpose. Amen. If it, look, can I say this? I mean, this is real country and he'll be alive. But it's the truth. If, listen, if it ain't in the well, it won't come up in the bucket. Help me somebody. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, listen, I'm not on a rant. I just want you to understand that there's, there's more to this than just joining the church. You have to be born of the Spirit. There's got to be something that on the inside of you that says, I can't go there anymore. There's got to be something that on the inside of you that says, I cannot live that way any longer. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach you a gospel perfection, saying, oh, you'll be perfect or you won't make it. No, I heard that and didn't believe it then, don't believe it now. But this one thing I do know, I know, amen, that I was blind but now I see I do know this today that I was lost and now I'm found I do know this today that old things have passed away and Jesus became the Lord of my life somebody give him a little bit of praise amen modern day Christianity says your best days are ahead of you just be the best you can today amen I came to tell somebody your best wasn't good enough to start with that's why God sent his best. Some people will miss heaven by 18 inches. They'll miss it by 18 inches. Do you know that? They got it here. They just don't have it here. I'm going to say it again. They're going to miss heaven by 18 inches. How close can you be? 18 inches away from heaven? It's in your head, but it's not in your heart. I'm not talking to anybody particularly here today. Probably some of for real. Somebody may be watching my, my Facebook. I don't know, but this is for somebody. Amen. Listen, you got a good head religion. Get it in your heart. When you get it in your heart, amen, it'll cause you to live right. Amen. When you get it in your heart, amen, you'll love the unlovable. Help me, somebody. Amen. The greatest sin in the church ain't dope. The greatest sin in the church today is not alcoholism. Amen. The greatest sin in the church today is hate and her brothers help me somebody amen and listen when you get it in your heart it make you love everybody help me I don't, don't make me sing I was done singing in Sunday school this morning amen and, and I think Buffy was impressed and going to invite me to the praise team but I'm going to decline amen because I got to preach but I want you to understand listen with me amen I don't want it just in my head I don't want to just read the commandments and know what they say I want to serve God out of my heart for in my heart comes amen and out of my heart comes the issues of life in my heart he has written upon the tables of my heart his laws. I didn't even read in the Bible where I shouldn't do this or that when I first got saved. But I knew in my heart. How did I know? He wrote his laws in our hearts today. Somebody give him a little bit of praise. Amen. 
If I had any doubts today, if I were saved or not, I'd find out before I left this place. The Bible is full of examples of people who came under the transforming power of Christ. The woman at the well, come see a man, told me everything he ever did. The demoniac of the Gadarenes, who no man could tame, was found clothed in his right mind. Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven devils. Amen. Luke 8 and 2, and a certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom seven devils. Saul, who become Paul on the road to Damascus. This congregation today is full of people who've been transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 and 10 said, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. My, my, ne my, next, my, next, my next little word is transfigured. A change in the likeness. Amen. We are most familiar with this word from the experience known as transfiguration. Matthew 17, 1 and 2 said, And after six days, P uh, Jesus take, taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth him up onto a high mountain, and was transfigured uh, before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Peter was so moved, he said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. In verse 5, the voice of God declared, This is my beloved son, in whom... Uh, I'm well pleased, hear ye him. The thing that got the disciples' attention was Jesus didn't look the same anymore. I want you to understand, the th uh, he was transfigured from the human son of man to the glorified son of God. For a moment, the disciples got a glimpse of what it's going to be like when, we, when this mortality puts on immortality, and this corruption puts on incorruption, and we shall be changed. I want you to understand. I I'm looking and longing for the day, amen, when the sound of the trumpet. I believe that the dead in Christ shall rise first. I think we all concur with that, amen. And I believe that about after they come about six foot up level with the ground, amen, I believe that you and I, amen, will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. That's what the Bible said, amen. And it's not, it's, it, it's not a change of raiment. It's a change from a natural body to a spiritual body, amen. And you and I shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord I want you to understand that there's a transformation amen there's a there's a tra there's a transfiguration that's coming to the body of Christ to the true believers that one day after a while when it comes amen you and I will be raptured out I, I know a lot of people fuss about this they some people say oh I don't believe in the rapture I said don't worry about you, you ain't gonna worry about you. you ain't going no way I said but I believe what Jesus said in John chapter 14 he said if I go away if I go to prepare a place for you. How many know he's been working on it for 2,000 plus years? He went to prepare a place for us. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Amen. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it, yet, and it does not yet appear what well. We shall be, but we know that when we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. I'm talking about a change of likeness. Philippians 3 and 20, 20, uh, 3 and 20 watch this, for our conversation is in heaven, for, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Transferred is my last little point. And you're going to get to beat the Baptist to Shoney's today, shores the world. The tea won't be watered down with ice or anything. By the time you get there, if you'll respond good, amen. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't like to change locations. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to me. And it's kind of crazy too. I know, uh, I know what we gave for our house, okay? And it ain't paid for, so, you know. I get people get mad at me because I got an old car. I work on, oh, you see who's got money now? You can't even have nothing, man. I mean, you got, so, Lord, you keep him, you keep him broke. We keep him humble. But uh, I know what we gave for the house. 
But I'm, my mind is blown now on what I could sell the house for. Two and a half times as much as I gave for it. And I could really come out with some money and go put that down a payment on a bigger house. But you know something? I kind of like it there. My address is 6066. I tell people, I said, ain't nothing between me and the devil, baby. Amen. 6066. That's my, that's my address. But, and, and I know, and it's an old split for your house. And I know, I know I'm going to get old one of these days and Norma's going to have to talk me up and down them steps. Amen? She's going to have to. But I like it there. I don't care anything about moving from there until the Lord comes and gets me. I could make some money and buy something bigger. But why? I like it where I'm at. I mean, we don't like to change locations. Uh, hey, you know, we moved from there. Remember? I mean, it was here when we went to church over there. Raise your hand. Anybody? We moved from over there. Hey, I remember when we was over here. We moved from here to here under the same roof, and people just had, I mean, people lost their mind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I said, it's in the same building. We just put a roof on it and moved it over. And then we moved from there to here. I had people standing here and crying and said, oh, God, preach, I just want to go back up there. I don't want to change locations. We don't like to change our location. That's why we sit in the same seat every service. Look at your neighbor. Say, uh, I think he preaching on you now. Uh, I had a preacher friend of mine up in Greenville. He had an elderly lady that came, and she'd been coming there, and she's a charter member of the church and all that. She had this one little old seat, and, uh, and every time a visitor would come and sit in her seat, she'd run them out. And she'd say, uh, people uh, that don't come here don't know, so you don't know, but that's my seat. Get up and get out, and they'd leave. And go home. He said, man, I, I had a lot of people I could have probably grown to church. He said, I just pray when they come in, they didn't sit in her seat. We don't, we don't like it. Amen. We're about to make a move any day now when all our possessions will be left behind. Nothing is going with us but the pure in heart and the Holy Ghost. This next move we're going to make is going to be unlike any that we've ever made before because the location is unlike any place that we've ever lived before. Revelation 21, watch this. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth that passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. First Thessalonians, I'm about done, watch this. 4 and 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Transferred to a place where there is no sickness. That's our faith. That's our hope. Transferred to a place that there's no such thing as COVID. Transferred to a place where there is no death. Funeral homes. It's over with for the funeral home directors. Amen. Transferred to a place of no separation. Transferred to a place of no sorrow. Transferred to a place of no more tears. My last verse standing. Revelations 21 and 4. Watch. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. There's no more sorrow. There's be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Can I tell you today, and I believe that I'm preaching to mostly saved people this morning. I don't doubt nobody's salvation in this building. I don't think I do. That's between you and the Lord. But to get there, you've got to be transformed, transfigured, and transferred. And I come by this morning just to ask you a question. Are you ready? Did you see the, uh, you see the news? I, I, the Bible said that in the last days, that men's heart would fail them for fear. I don't care what side of the political spectrum you stand on. I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. It don't make no difference to me. But uh, they're gaslighting us with fear in this country. 
I had somebody call me this week. Oh, God, preacher, fuck, I got the rotor. I said, ah, you'll make it. I don't know, I'm scared to death. I said, I thought you was a Christian, man. I'm just scared. I said, turn the TV off. It'll help you, old bunch. Quit watching that gaslighting mess they do on TV. You ain't afraid? I said, no. I said, actually, I went and picked up a dude out of the hospital. I had the coronavirus. <laughs> took him home. I took him to Walgreens and took him home. I said, he gave his wife the coronavirus. I said, but I didn't get it. He said, how come you didn't get it? I said, because I wasn't afraid of it. I said, I ain't scared of it. I had the flu last week. <laughs> There's a verse in Revelation that really troubles me, though. And it puts the fearful in the same category with the abominable, with the murderers. Well, I mean, I mean, the fearful. It said the fearful was added in that count of those that wouldn't go into heaven. My, my fear is for the people of God that we're living in fear that the world can't see that we've been transformed. See, if Jesus Christ has hands, right here they are. Look at it. Hold your hand out. Look at it right there. That's his hand. If he has a mouth, right here it is. He wants to love through your loving, touch through your touching, help through your helping. And we're so afraid. In the hour that we live in, we got to be transformed. You know, I read, I ain't Jesus, but I read where Jesus laid hands on the leper. Amen. I read, I, read, I read where Mother Teresa opened up a whole place just to put the sick. And God's looking for somebody that's transformed. He's looking to transform somebody this morning. He's looking for somebody to be transfigured into the image of Christ. And then one day soon, transferred to a new location by you with me just for a moment today I'm so thankful that you came to the house of God so honored to get to be back as you pass 50 and you get sick you don't know if it's going to be the last time you'll be here or not I'm just glad to be back I wasn't worried about where I was going I know the Lord come got me I was ready to go but I'm so glad to be back with you today so honored to get to stand before you and open the holy book bring a challenge to all of our lives are you transformed this morning when people see you do they know that Jesus lives on the inside of you are you ready for the transferring of the saints out of this place today while nobody's looking around saints of God are praying I'm opening the altars this morning I don't know if I got any prayer walkers this morning. If I do, they can start walking. I'm opening this altar today for you that need a transformation. I want to invite you to this altar. If you're here today and you don't know if you're ready, should the Lord come or call, that means you're not ready to be transferred. I'm opening the altar for you today to come and make things right between you and the Lord. Would you come? I'm opening the altar today for those who need to be transfigured, who need to be in the image of Christ. Would you come? Would you step out of your seat and come down here and say, I just want to be transformed, transfigured, and transferred. I just need Christ in my life. I want the world to know that Christ is in me, the hope of glory. I want my light to bring I want my light to be brighter than it's ever been in this dark and last generation we're in. Would you come? Would you step out of your seat and just come down here and say, God, transform me. God, make me into your image and make me into your likeness. God, will you move in my life that the world will know that you live inside me? See, that's the only evidence of Christ in the earth is when we see his light in believers. Would you come? Some come help our brother pray over here. Come on. Now you ain't got to be the first one. You know what? I come to this church a long, long time before I was a pastor. 
I'm honest to God with you, and my wife tell you, I'm, t I'm telling you the truth. I answered every altar call they gave. I answered them because I wanted to draw nigh to Him. I wanted more of Him in my life. And I knew and I understood that the only way I could get it was in the altars of God. And I'm opening this altar for those who want more of Christ in their life. Would you come? There ought to be everybody in the building. Everybody ought to come. Gather around these altars and say, God, transform me into your image. Lord, I want to be transfigured. I want people to look at me and see and know that you live on the inside of me. Would you come this morning? This is our only service today. This is a great opportunity to come and ask the Lord.
that are praying can continue to pray. But let's give God a hand clap of praise for everything He done here this morning. Let's thank Him for allowing us to be here this morning. You know, as we uh, the early service was canceled this morning, and so me and my husband we were in our bedroom, and we heard the the, the rain and the ice falling, and and we're like, oh no, what's going to happen? But you know what? The sun come out. Not just the S O N, but the S U N came out. And he dried up everything so that we can come here and we can worship the S-O-N. How many of us is glad that God allowed us to be here this morning? Isn't it wonderful to be here this morning? You know, we, we are very blessed to have a church like this where we can come in where it's warm. And we have the nice seats to sit in. Because I have been at places where they didn't have no heat, no air. And the, the seats were hard. But we are so blessed here. Don't forget, we don't have service tonight, but we will have service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Also, ladies, don't forget, we are having our monthly meeting this Thursday night at 6.30. And if the, the verse that you, or not the verse, I'm sorry, the women, the woman that you drew, we are going to be talking about the women of the Bible. So study up your lady so that you can give us information on her. If you need a paper on whatever on uh, what we are doing on uh, the women that we are studying please let me know and i can get you a copy but we're having that uh, thursday night at 6 30. so let's stand and let's go before the lord in prayer and let's thank him for allowing us to be here this morning dear precious Heavenly father god we thank you we worship you god this morning god we thank you god for allowing us to be here this morning god we thank you god for allowing the weather to stop so that we can come in and we can worship your holy name father god we pray god for safety for the ones that uh, was not here this morning, God. We pray that you'll give us safety and traveling mercies back to our homes, God. We pray, God, that you'll just lead us and guide us and bring us back at your personal time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.